Hi, I'm Eric Jurgensen, a hobbyist blacksmith based in Oklahoma City. Welcome to my basement shop. This video is going to talk about the use of an induction heater to make tongs. I have built a series of coils and I'm going to talk about which ones are optimal for making tongs and also what procedures work well for making tongs. Over the past few months I've made 10 pairs of tongs, including the eight pictured here. And in that time I've also made three additional coils for use with making tongs. The one I started with before I made any coils is the one that came with the machine um, that I bought almost two years ago. This is inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half inner diameter, inch and a half long, and that's not too bad for typical stock I use which is three quarter. It's not a great fit, tight fit but it also leaves me lots of room for maneuvering when I'm doing the, the jaw or boss of the tong. However, I felt like I needed a longer heat to be more efficient. So, I started by making this coil. This coil makes about a six inch heat. It advances one inch with each loop. What I found with this coil is that six inches is more than I can reasonably work when I'm working with three quarter stock. Now this has a one inch inner diameter. It was actually made around uh, three-quarter inner diameter schedule 40 pipe so it's just proud of one inch but as you can see three-quarters fills it fairly nicely with a little bit of rim so I'm not shorting coils all the time but as I mentioned it's just a little bit longer than I can work I really like it at the end I like to ovalize the reins on my tongs and this is just great for doing that so I'll often put this on to do the last bit of finishing up of the tongs after I made that one, I made um, actually this one, which I've listed as my failed coil in another video. It's failed because I made six loops and it, it, that was too much inductance for the induction heater to work correctly with it. And that's why the last loop is actually shorted out. So it's effectively a five loop coil. This is a half inch advance. Uh, it does heat. It's the same inner diameter made over the same kind of pipe. It does heat very rapidly. And if you've watched that other video, you've seen me get to a welding heat in 20 seconds. It's, it's really nice for that. But the heat is not as long as I like to work. So I made another one with three-quarter spacing, halfway between basically the other two. And this produces about a four-inch working heat. Um, and that's pretty good for, for drying out the reins of tongs. The challenge beyond that is what do you do with the head of tongs uh, with the, the bit and the jaw. You're going to have trouble getting it in here with some, but with a light pair of flat bit tongs, everything fits quite nicely. The reins obviously fit. It fit well as three quarters, but even the entire head will fit in. It's fairly easy to short things out, but if you have your hand carefully propped, you can, you can work this entirely in here, which means you can follow Brian Brazil's procedures exactly and make a pair of tongs that is this in fact is very much like the pair he makes in his video. However, with a pair of tongs like this, you can't do it. This I made to basically the dimensions and specifications that Mark Asbury has in his uh, Fundamentals Volume 1 book. And what I found with this one is the procedure that works really well, not the one I quite followed, but the procedure that works really well is to make a tong blank first with both ends made. So got the rings, the two ends, so it's a double tong blank back, back to back and then I can cut it at some point in there. Um, the longer I leave it together, the more likely I am to get the reins exactly the same length and not have to cut a second time. So I like to, but it may get too long to work. It may be cumbersome. This pair, I actually made the jaw on one side first. And then I had to work backwards the rest of the time. And this jaw is hard to hold while I'm trying to go all the way around. I can go back and forth a little bit, but I like to keep rotating all the way around as I draw out the reins. And I found that was very uncomfortable. So what I figured, for the next pair I made that was going to have jaws too big, and that's the pair I'm going to show in this video. Uh, it's a pair of V-bit tongs. This pair. 
Um, and these become too wide toward the end, so I can't quite finish up the jaws. So I use the other procedure, and it works nicely to make a tongue blank, a double-ended tongue blank, all the way, and then put the ends on it. And somewhere in there, I will switch back to the inch and a half short coil, which works really well. It actually works pretty well on this kind of shape because As you can see, I can work just about any part of it in here, um, and I can even do things like get to the boss after I've put the reins together. Um, so it's a good versatile coil, it just isn't a long enough heat. I like the three-quarter spacing for working the reins, basically make an entire tongue blank that way. Then I begin working the heads, but once I have to do something like bend this, or the V-bit gets too wide, the jaw gets too wide for the for the one inch. I move up to the one and a half. All right, so let's look at a pair of V-bit tongs. When I make tongs, I usually aim for reins about the length of the square part of my anvil. If they're heavier tongs like these with the longer gooseneck jaws that need a little more leverage, I may go a little bit more than that. But in this case, I'm about to make a pair of tongs that's more like this one. So I'm basically going to aim for this for the length. I know from experience that the jaw is going to take about an inch, and it's going to be a heavier boss than this, so it's going to take about an inch, and I'm making a three quarters. So it'll, it'll come out with the heavier boss more like this pair of tongs. I think I'll give it a little slop, about a half inch. So here I've marked off two and a half inches for the boss and jaw, and one inch for the actual set down of the jaw. The section of the anvil I use for measuring the reins is 13 inches. Now if I'm using three-quarter stock, I'm going to get four times expansion drawing down to three-eighths. So 13 times 2, 26, divided by 4, six and a half inches of three-quarter inch stock will give me the reins. So, I'm measuring out 11 and a half inches of stock, marking off two and a half inches for one end, boss and jaw, two and a half inches for the other end, boss and jaw, leaving six and a half in the middle, and a final mark at 11 and a half inches. Going into this project, I had a piece of stock left that was a bit longer than the 11 and a half inches. So I'm cutting it part way through both to mark the 11 and a half inch point and to cut down on the heat transfer. Now this heat is a little longer than I need. Ideally I would use my half inch spacing coil, but getting a coil on the machine for just one heat isn't worth it. Watch the output meter. It will sit under 400 until red starts showing. Now it will ramp up to 800 as the red spreads. All three of these five loop coils are a bit out of range with cold three quarter round stock. Fortunately, subsequent heats at or near the same region have enough heat left to avoid this effect. The net result is that my first heat is going to take nearly a minute. This coil has given me about a 4 inch heat. I'll start working that down. What I found is in practice this is about all I can work of 3 quarter inch stock. In a few passes here I'll have this work down to about half inch square. On a side note, this is not mild steel. It is what is known in the oil industry as sucker rod. It is 4130 or very similar, so it works a bit like tool steel. I can get used 3 quarter inch for as little as $3 per 25 foot section, and it makes tough, durable tongs. And perhaps a tough, durable smith as well. With this first heat of a cold bar, the ends of the heat cool down quite quickly. It's only about the middle 2 inches, well what has grown from it, that is still workable. Subsequent heats will be workable longer because of the retained heat in the bar. My reheat of this same section starts off at full current. 
This is mainly due to the retained heat, but it's also a slightly thinner section. In less than 30 seconds, I'm back to the anvil with a strong yellow heat. That 30 second heat has given me about 30 seconds of good working time. Now let's skip forward to the last heat at the near end of the tom. Here again the heat has taken about 30 seconds and it's going to afford me 30 seconds or a little bit over of working time. This is the basic rhythm that the rough drawing has. This finishes up the rough forging at the near end. I leave a little proud of 3 8 so that I don't over thin the metal. Now I've heated the far end, estimating where I have to go, and I'm going to finish the rough forging here at the far end. Now a second pass of lighter and more precise forging to bring it to 3 8 square. I have a bit of 3 8 round stock there for reference. Once I get a section of 3 8 square established, the bar itself becomes my reference and I won't need to go back to the uh, round stock for reference over and over. And after another less than 30 seconds heating the metal, I'm refining it, finishing up this uh, 3 8 square section. Then I will be drawing it all out to 3 8 square. However, about now is when the camera battery goes out and I don't realize it. So here it is after drawing out to 3 8 square and then turning it into 3 8 round. 4 inch heats are also good for the square to round transition, so I left the same coil on. I do often need a second reddish heat to finish smoothing the 4 inches of work. Watch the end of the stock as I insert it. Notice that the heat really is going into about the outer 1 8 inch. Since the penetration goes up as the induction frequency goes down, I'm optimizing the penetration of this unit by having a coil with as many loops as possible, thereby encouraging it to operate at its lowest frequency, which is about 30 kHz. The more powerful three-phase units operate at lower frequencies than that and can therefore directly heat an even thicker section. The reason I inserted the stock slowly was to circumvent the ramp-up effect we saw earlier. This trick obviously only works at the ends. As you can see, I used the first heat to rough out the jaw and the boss. Now the jaw is basically as wide as I can get through the coils, and the boss is finished, so I'm going to take the next few heats to work on the transition to the rings.
If these were flat bit tongs, I'd be done, but I'm going for V-bit here, so I need to work the jaw a bit more. I'm going to see how far I can get with this coil before I have to switch to the one and a half. Okay, let's try for one more heat. And it's arcing. So this is going to be the last heat, even though I can kind of manage it even just a hair wider, and I won't be able to keep it from shorting. So now let's turn it off and switch the coil. In some cases, angling the stock not only gets you a slightly longer heat, it actually seems to couple electromagnetically a little better and gets you a quicker heat. Keep an eye on the edges of the metal though, they can hit welding heat pretty quickly. Use several heats just like this one to square up and tidy both jaws. I marked the rivet location with a center punch. I'm starting with a low heat so I can see the center punch while I make a shallow impression with the flat face 3 8 inch punch. Then in a subsequent full heat I will easily find the location to punch. For riveting the tongs together I usually heat just one side of the rivet like this. These tongs are going to be set for three-quarter square stock. This is trickier with bolt tongs where I have to heat one jaw than the other, but for these I can just stick the entire jaw right inside my one and a half inch coil. I usually jog my reins in slightly so that they lay one over the other. It's going to take several heats, just like this one, to get that all tweaked together at the vise. And after about 10 minutes of tweaking, I have everything lined up nicely and the tongs are almost done. I use a couple of quick heats to bend out the ends of the reins to hold tong clips. And finally I switch out to the 1 inch spacing coil to do the heats for ovalizing the reins. So there you have it, another pair of tongs. And as I always say, if you run out of space on your tong rack for another pair of tongs, your tong rack is too small.